facial convexity and soft tissue diagnosis using soft tissue landmarks. Uh, any science that aims to affect facial dimensions and appearance needs to understand faces, how they are, and how you then change them. And an important part of that is um, making analysation of the face using these constructed points known as soft tissue landmarks. These are concepts like tip of the nose, uh, front point on the chin, that can be recognised by different people so that we know we're speaking the same language, we're understanding what other people are saying. And they can be used in diagnosis to understand what you want to do. Now, here we have the total facial convexity, and this is made by three points. Those points are gabella, up on the forehead, they're pronasali, on the tip of the nose, and borgonian, on the front tip of the chin. And by drawing lines between these three points, from here to here to here, we get an assessment of what is called the total facial convexity. The total facial convexity is used quite a lot with an orthotropodontics, and it's used to assess the relative positions of the upper and lower jaws. So, for example, when an orthodontist is considering using a headgear, he would consider that if the mid-face is set further forward, so the face is more convex, he may want to consider using a head brace, or subsequently may he want to maybe use a functional appliance to bring the lower jaw forwards. It's the relative position of these two sections of the face. Now, my own concern, because I've often used, um, I've often seen, sorry, facial convexity used to warrant headgear when I personally thought it was the mandal was too far back. So it's important to understand how we use them, but these are methods so that we can all speak the same language and we know what's going on. Now, we then have um, con facial con convexity angle. And this is slightly different, it's not as commonly used as total facial convexity. But the convexity angle is looking at the relative angle between the um, mid-face and the lower face. So by drawing two different lines and measuring the angle in between, you then again from Gabala, but this time you go to subnasali, the sort of um, little point just here, where the philtrum joins the base of the nose and then down to Pagodian. And by looking at this relative angle will give you some idea of the convexity of the face removing the nose, because obviously um, some people have larger noses, some groups have larger noses, so this removes the nose to look more at the underlying tissues, but it's not as commonly used as the total facial convexity. Um, then we look at the nasiofacial angle. So this is really looking at the angle between the nose and the face. So making points um, from again Gabella, Burgonian down here, um, nasion, which is just on the base here, and pronasali, that is down on the front of the nose here. And by taking an angle, basically looking at the base here, and then out onto the bridge of the nose, it really gives you a, an angle on the, the um, angulation of the nose itself. And interesting, it, as I say, it varies between population groups. However, it's not that commonly used within orthodontics. So, lower third angle. The lower third angle is the angle between the mandible here, looking up to sebnasali, the bottom of the nose here. So looking how far forward or far backward this angle here is, 
and the angles used on this would be the points used, the Sebnazali menton and the cervical point C. So menton is just below the chin here, the cervical point running along back here, not so well defined, and again subnasale. And by taking these two points here, you can draw an angle. But finding soft tissue menton is not specifically, it's not very reproducible. So again, this is not an angle that's used that commonly within orthodontics. Um, the nasolabial angle. So the nasolabial angle takes um, so the upper limit of the upper lip to um, subnasale out to CO, well, Really, you're just looking at the, 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 the bottom edge of the nose. Some people take it to nose tip, because again, that's a slightly more reproducible point. Because some of these points are very difficult to reproduce. Now, the nasolabial angle is very, very commonly used within orthodontics, linking up these points. And it's really an assessment of the upper lip. And the reason this is used is that if you're considering taking out teeth, you want to know how much lip, particularly upper lip support, you're going to gain or lose for that matter if you're taking out teeth. And an increase in the nasolabial angle can often be unattractive. It makes the nose seem to stick out even further than it really does. And a good assessment of the nasolabial angle is really quite important when you're doing some orthodontic diagnosis. Um, mentolabial angle. Well, we've discussed the mentolabial fold before. This is a fold between the lower lip and the uh, men mentalis muscle. And this is trying to gain some assessment of the size of it. Um, to do this, we look at um, Bergonian, which is on the front tip of the chin. We look at the deepest point of the anterior con concavity of the mandibular symphysis, which is just basically the bottom of the fold and at the lower limit of the um, lower lip. So by linking those three points together, you can have some assessment of the depth of the mentolabial fold. Um, it's, it's a good, theoretically, it's, it's a good concept, an interesting concept, but usually you would just look at the mentolabial fold and say it's shallow, it's deep, it's very deep, rather than making an actual assessment. Because again, it's, Every individual is different, and frequently you'll become across individuals where it's actually quite difficult to find some of these points to assess them.